Oh, get ready, the evening shadows fall. Don't you hear the Eliezer call? There's gonna be a wedding, our joy shall soon begin. When the camel train comes in. Thank you for your support of Honest News Network. Well, folks, we need to be preparing to get out of here. Dark days are ahead, as the Lord has told us. I don't know exactly what's going on in this country, but it seems like to me, our country is being taken over by communists. I don't believe that we are a free country anymore. I think this is becoming a communist country. I'm not sure what's going to happen in the next few days. They're speaking of rising up all over the United States. I know the Lord is in control fully, completely, and that nothing happens that he does not know about even before it happens. Are you listening? Before it even happens, he knew it was going to happen. He prepared for that. He made provision for that. So nothing, and I mean nothing, takes the Lord by surprise. Amen? It should not take us by surprise if we're listening to what the Spirit is saying. We should be ready. We should be prepared. No reason to be afraid. No reason to be anxious or worried. When you know that everything is in God's control. Even when it seems it's out of control. It's still in his control. To do as he pleases. Let's open in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for eternal life. We thank you for the hope of eternal life that we have within us, that you gave to us, this hope. The world doesn't have this hope. We pray, Lord, that your people will recognize their responsibility, Lord, in this hour, that we are to be an example we are to be a light to this generation. We are not to be like the world. We're not to be afraid. We're not to be hopeless. We're not to be sad and sorrowing. Lord, we pray that your people will be encouraged by this message and that they will rejoice in the truth, Lord. We pray that you'll bless and anoint your people to receive this message, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. There is nothing, nothing, there is nothing, that my God can't do. There are miracles, miracles. There is nothing, no, nothing 
that my God can't do. There is nothing, nothing, there is nothing that my God can't do. There are miracles, miracles. There is nothing, no, nothing that my God can't do. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. We begin with Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. If you like to follow in the reading of God's word, the Holy Scriptures. Ephesians chapter 4, beginning with verse 1. I therefore, the prisoner of our Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Paul likened himself to be a prisoner of the Lord. Do you? Do you reckon yourself to be a prisoner of the Lord, that he has taken you captive? Not against your will, but willingly. You have willingly surrendered to be a prisoner of the Lord. There's nothing more wonderful. There's nothing greater than being his prisoner. It's not bondage. Amen? It's not torment. It's not suffering. To be his prisoner. To be held captive by him is to be safe from all harm. Praise the Lord. You're either going to be a prisoner of the Lord or you're going to be a prisoner of the devil. There's no other option. Amen. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. You really don't have to make much comment. Just reading these scriptures, if you believe them, should be enough. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. I will just make mention forbearing means to put up with, to get along, to put up with. Are you listening? Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit. In the bond of peace, endeavoring to keep the unity. It's going to take some work. There is one body, one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. Now, some might say, if there's one body, then how is there a bride and a church? Remember, God took a rib out of Adam while Adam slept. And he created Eve and brought Eve to Adam. Jesus is the last Adam. And out of his body, the church, 
while the church sleeps, just as Adam's body was sleeping, just as Adam slept, God performed an operation. He took out a rib company of, or he took out a rib, getting ahead of myself, and he created Eve. And out of the last Adam, God is taking out a rib company of people, overcomers, while the church sleeps, while the body of Christ sleeps. Are you listening? Just because the scripture says there's one body does not mean that there's still not going to be a remnant a rib company of people where we see in the book of Revelation this body of Christ is that woman that is giving birth to the man-child. And this is going to happen while the church sleeps. Are you listening? One Lord, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all who is above all. Let's never forget He's above all. And through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Is everyone given the same measure? Apparently not. Right? Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. And he gave some gifts unto men, right? Now he that ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up, far above all heavens. Catch a vision of that. Catch a vision of that far above all heavens that he might fill all things. And he's calling us to that place far above all heavens to sit with him in his throne. He gave some apostles. Are all apostles? No, he gave some according to the measure of the gift of his grace. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. from whom the whole body fitly joined together 
and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. We'll come back to this verse. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. And be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor. Working with his hands the thing which is good. That he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, and wrath, and anger, and clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind one to another, tender-hearted, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Let's read that verse again. And be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Now, we're not going to deal with this verse in this message, but... We will be in the future. Verse 24 again. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. True holiness. Even in the New Age movement, they call it holiness. 
Do a search sometime on the internet. Even amongst those that believe in Hinduism, they call it holiness. And their gurus stick manure in their hair from the cows because they consider the cows to be holy. That's where they get that term, holy cow. Anybody listening? And even holy manure. They believe the cow is holy, sacred. Listen to me. Paul makes a distinction. There's a reason why he calls it true holiness. Because it is not like the holiness of these religious cults. Are you listening? It's not holiness based on how good I can be or how I can make myself perfect. That you put on the new man. The word put on in the original Greek is where Jesus said, tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. To put on the new man means to be clothed upon. It means to be endued. Are you listening? Endued with power. The new man that is created in righteousness and true holiness comes from above. Do you hear what I said? The new man comes from above. Put on the new man. Power with God. The anointing. The power of the Holy Ghost. The dutimus of God. To live a holiness life is to live by the power of God. You can't separate holiness from the power of God. If you look up the key words in the Bible concerning holiness and concerning power, you will find they go together. The power of holiness. Are you listening? You cannot experience the holiness of God without the power of God. The church today, in large part, is powerless. And the reason they're powerless is because they're not living holiness. Separation from the world. Separation from sin. Separation from flesh. Carnality. Living a separated and a godly life. You can't do that. I can't do that. It takes the power of God. It takes the power of an endless life. Are you listening? It takes the dutimus of God, folks. It takes that resurrection power of Jesus Christ, an endless life, eternal life. not enough just to be saved. Amen. Jesus told the disciples to tarry in Jerusalem. They already had experienced, begun to experience the new birth. They've already begun to follow him in the new generation or the new regeneration, I should say being born again. But they had yet to be clothed upon with that new man. That's why you see Simon Peter 
as a new man after Pentecost. He's not the same anymore. That's why you see Saul is no longer Saul. He's a new man. Amen? That doesn't mean they didn't have to deal with that old man still. But what it means is now they have a new man. And how many know you got to grow in the Lord? Because as you grow, your garment grows. Your covering grows. That new man grows. Are you listening? The more that you give place to that new man, the more that new man will grow. That new man is created in righteousness, folks. Anybody understand what I'm saying to you? The idea today is when you're born again, that you're clothed upon with that new man, that you automatically know. The Bible says when you are born again or when you're saved, your soul is saved. But that new man, Paul said, I knew of a man once, whether I was in my spirit or out of my spirit, how he was caught up to the third heaven. Anybody listening? How he was caught up to paradise. What's Paul talking about? Because there's not just your soul, brothers and sisters. There is a new man created in righteousness that we are clothed upon with power. I was thinking of this today. The Lord is not going to be ashamed with those that make themselves ready. Those that are accounted worthy, those that he is transforming, changing, he's not going to be ashamed of them. That doesn't mean he's not ashamed of us now, but he's not going to be ashamed of us over there. Are you listening? I remember when Peter said to Jesus, depart from me, O Lord, I'm a sinful man. And there's times even now, brothers and sisters, that we feel like that. We shrink back from the Lord. Amen? In the book of Song of Solomon, she says, don't look on me because I'm black. She says, the sun has looked upon me. She'd been working out in the field. Her skin had become darkened. She was a hard worker. Are you listening? How many know that's not something you should shrink back from? The Lord likes or loves a diligent, hard worker. Nothing to be ashamed of. Amen. There was something in her that caused her to be ashamed of herself. She was shrinking back from him. He wasn't shrinking back from her. And he wasn't ashamed of her. But she was ashamed of herself. Are you listening? I mean, no, we don't see ourselves as he sees us. He sees you and I through his righteousness. God the Father, when he looks upon us, yeah, he knows we still have a ways to go, but he still sees us in the finished work created in Christ Jesus. Amen? If we could only see ourselves as he sees us, instead of seeing ourselves as the Shulamite that says, don't look on me, don't look in my direction. Brothers and sisters, it is true that the Lord's bride his wife is not going to be a slave. She's not going to be a slave, even a servant in that sense. But she is now. He's raising her up. 
to sit with him in his throne. There are times that you and I shrink back from the Lord. Why? Why do we shrink back? What is it about us that we're so afraid to draw near to him? Without question, it's because we're self-centered. We're conscious of self instead of being conscious of him. Amen? The more conscious we become of him, the more conscious we become of self. Why? Because we see ourselves as we are. Amen? And it's when we see ourselves as we are and we're honest, that's when the Lord changes us. That's when he transforms us. But we have to see ourselves as we are. We have to be honest. We have to not lie against the truth. You can't really know how far you fall short of his glory if he does not reveal that to you. Amen? The world today is condemned because the light has come into the, this world and they love darkness. They won't come to the light. That their deeds may be reproved. That they might be changed, transformed. But you and I, brothers and sisters, we need to be drawing near to that light. To that invisible God that's in that unapproachable light. Are you listening? We need to be drawing near with a full heart, a true heart, full assurance, not shrinking back. There's no time to shrink back, brothers and sisters. We can't afford to be shrinking back. We need to be asking the Lord to help us. We see in Shul the Shulamite woman in Song of Solomon, she says, draw me, and we will run after thee. Amen. The Lord says if we draw back, he'll have no pleasure in us. So if you think that's humility, I'm being humble when you draw back from the Lord. You're not being humble. The Lord says I'll have no pleasure in you. Because he has made full, complete provision for you and I to make ourselves ready. That we do not need to be ashamed. Amen? No reason to be ashamed if we let him change us, transform us. I don't need to go into all the scriptures. You, you've seen them. As we behold the glory of the Lord, we are changed. Right? We shall be like him. We shall see him as he is. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're in the time now of purification, brothers and sisters, where the Lord is making some of us pure, that we might see God, that we might be peacemakers, Amen. Praise the Lord. We cannot be pure if we don't approach and keep approaching and keep drawing near to the light. Keep coming to the light. Keep coming into the light. That your deeds might be reproved. Praise God. Not everyone today loves the light. Not everyone today is willing to come into the light. 
Amen. There's no time to draw back, no time to fall away, as many are falling away right now. Praise the Lord. Put on that new man. Keep putting on that new man. Keep growing. Keep developing. Until you're walking, living, moving in his spirit. That new man. That spiritual man in Christ Jesus. A living soul, right? Not carnal, not fleshly, not the old man of sin, but the new man, spiritual man, and a living soul. Praise the Lord, created in Christ Jesus in righteousness and true holiness. Amen. God bless you. We've got the power in the name.